So the other day I spent about three and a half hours outside in the cold shooting a couple different time lapses and most of that footage as you can see here running while I'm talking um, is not great and if you look carefully you notice this flickering that really bothers me and I think takes what could be decent footage it's not super exciting but decent footage um, and just knocks it down to basically worthless. Uh, this is all because I forgot one simple thing to do. And I want to talk briefly about that now. So I shot this in manual mode. I set my aperture so it didn't change over the course of the uh, time lapse. And, and I shot, I set my shutter speed. Now, every time you take a picture, and I'm, I know it's blurry, it looks blurry here for a second, but you're going to see the, the aperture. When I take a picture, it's set for 30 seconds right now. Um, that's longer than I want. But you can see that the aperture closed down inside that lens. Every time you take a picture, the aperture closes down, the shutter fires, um, and then the aperture opens back up. What happens over the course of a time lapse where you're taking hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of photos, is that there are minute differences in the amount of your aperture. So even though I have it currently set on 6.3, this is what 6.3 aperture looks like um, in a 50 millimeter lens, uh, that even though that's what it, it looks like, every time it closes and opens, there may be tiny amounts of changes. It's still set at 6.3, because I told the camera, your aperture is 6.3, but there are just enough changes to vary the exposure, and when you put them together in this film, you see a little bit of flickering. So how do you avoid that? It's kind of a nifty trick. It might seem a little scary, but it really isn't. You can't hurt your camera. First thing you do is you set up your exposure the way you want, your aperture and your shutter speed. And then on the side of the camera, you press this little depth of field preview button. So you press the depth of field preview button, which moves the aperture to your desired settings. While holding that down, you press the lens release and you rotate the lens just enough so that it loses its contact with the uh, brains of the camera. Now, your camera no longer knows what aperture you have set at. That's why it's important to set up all of your exposure beforehand because the camera can no longer help you. But this means that that aperture is going to stay locked whether it's taking a picture or not. I can now um, you know, put it into any mode I want and I can take a picture and you can see that that shutter stays locked and the camera works fine. I only rotated that lens, you know, a small amount, a fraction of an inch, less than a quarter of an inch, I would say. And you'll know it's far enough when you let go of the depth of field preview button and the aperture remains frozen right there. If you watch, if I rotate the lens back into the locked position, once I do that, it regains contact and the aperture opens back up. So if you want to be serious about time lapses and you want really good time lapses, you need to make sure, without the flicker, you need to make sure that you uh, unlock and rotate that lens with your aperture locked down just a little bit. I'm shooting at aperture 6.3. To practice, you should shoot at something, uh, or I mean, at practice of disconnecting, uh, you should shoot something like that so that you can really... Uh, see if you're shooting at uh, a really wide aperture, 2.8, uh, 1.8, 1.4, you're, you're not going to see the lens, uh, the aperture inside the lens locked down nearly as much. Um, so it's nice to, to start off with something bigger just to get a visual sense for if it's working and things of that sort. So I hope this helps. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.